unwavering faith, ultimate belief, dependence on the Lord. The message is clear, guys. If I was to ask you, would you consider yourself a control freak? What would you say? Now, control freak meaning there are certain areas in your life where you really don't want to give up control over. And if you're anything like me, your answer would be an absolute freaking yes. Back in high school, I was an absolute big control freak, especially my junior year of high school. Um, I didn't wanna give up control in certain areas of my life. More specifically, group projects was a big one because I knew that you know whoever I got partnered up with wasn't gonna do as good of a job as I was going to do. So I was a control freak in that aspect. Another area where I was a control freak was my friendships. Not so much to the point where I was like controlling my friendships, but more so to the point where it was just, I felt the desire and the need to always be, you know, talking to them and making sure that I had these healthy friendships. So control freak there. Another area was athletics. I always felt like I always had to achieve this standard that I set for myself when it came to athletics or, you know, in the weight room, I always was such a big control freak over things when it came to athletics. And then another area was college. When it came to college, I always wanted to make sure my applications were good and trying to figure out where to go to college and also trying to figure out just the right people to talk to and so on and so forth. But all of that wasn't until somebody hit me with a hard wake up call. Somebody very close to me asked me the question, what if you let go of all of these things and had faith that God would handle it himself? What would happen? The truth to that answer, well, life is going to move on. <laughs> you know, if I didn't care so much in the group projects, if I got a B instead of an A, life was going to move on. I was going to be okay. You know, it's just going to continue. Now, if I spent less time, you know, trying to figure out who my friendships were and just curating this healthy circle of friends, maybe I would have figured out who my real friends were if I just had faith and let God handle it. When it came to colleges, instead of like applying and talking to people, and yes, I know that's part of living a life here on earth, but if I just let it God do his thing, if I just prayed to him, I feel like that could have gone a lot better. Now, if you ask me if I you know, loosened up a little bit with the athletics, I'm not an athlete anymore, but I do cheer for sports and I can honestly say I have not really figured out how to <laughs> release the control that I have on rooting for teams or you know, just anything related to athletics. But anyway, let me ask you a new question that bounces off of our first question, which is, would you consider yourself a control freak? What are things in your life that you're having a hard time letting go of? And why do you think that is? For some of you junior, senior students watching this video, some of your minds go straight to the future. You know, you're trying to figure out what college to go to. You're trying to figure out um, what you want to study or what your career wants to be or if, if, when or if you can find a boyfriend or a girlfriend and when am I going to have a husband or a wife or when am I going to get dogs? Or how many kids do I want? And like your mind just races to all of these things. But then you also have your parents just like pressuring you, trying to figure out all of this at the same time because you're about to go to college and you're about to be your independent adult and it is just a lot and I get it. Now for some of you freshman, sophomore students that might be watching this video, a couple things that could come to mind are this. I need to do well in school. I need to perform well on the field, court, track to get to varsity. What type of friend groups should I surround myself with or how do I balance all of my time now that I'm in high school? Lots and lots of pressure as a high school student. I get it. I mean, I was there. <laughs> but what if I asked you the same question that helped me release control and uh, honestly add faith into the mix? What if you let go of all the things and had faith that God would handle it? What would happen? You see, we're in the second week of our series, Unwavering Faith. And in this series, we're taking a look at three stories where people interact with Jesus and they each demonstrate amazing faith. Last week, we talked about having faith through desperation and looked at the bleeding woman in the Bible. And the bleeding woman can be found in Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 26, if you want to go back and read it, which I highly recommend you do. There's a very, very cool lesson that we can learn in that story. And we're going to learn a very, very cool lesson in today's story as well. Speaking of which, let's get into it. Um, we're going to look at one of the only men in the Bible 
who made Jesus shocked. Like, shocked. <laughs> Any guesses as who this might be? It's a Roman soldier. Now, it might not sound so crazy at first, or it might sound really crazy, but let's dive into the story and let's unpack this a little bit. But before we get into the actual story of this Roman soldier having faith, let me kind of paint the picture because for you, I feel like if I paint a picture in my head of what I'm reading, it helps me understand it a little bit better and it also helps me to remember it better as the week and months and years go on. Anyway, the picture is this. Jesus just got done giving his famous Sermon on the Mount, all right? That is found in Matthew chapter 5 through 7. If you want to read it, fantastic. It's Jesus giving a big old sermon, um, and it's just really, really a uh, good read if you need a little bit of background on some of that stuff. But anyway, he just gave a really big, awesome Sermon on the Mount. And if you're anything like me, like I just said, I like to paint a picture, and I painted this picture in my head of Sermon on the Mount where, you know, he's on top of this mountain, and he's like up here, and all the people are like down here and he's like preaching down well no that's not really how it worked at all i think i saw that in like a children's bible one time and i'm like this is like kind of cool so now it's like in my head for good but really all it was is a big old group of people followed jesus to the top of a mountain he gave this sermon on the mount and now they're coming down this mountain like hundreds if not thousands of people are following jesus down this mountain to their destination which is capernaum now that is where our story the story begins in the town of Capernaum. So let's pick up. Um, it is going to be Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 8. We're going to start out with. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible agony. He said to him, this is Jesus speaking, am I to come and heal him? Lord, the centurion replied, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Okay, we're going to pause here because we already see a little bit, not a little bit, a lot of bit of faith from this centurion. I mean, what do you notice at the end of verse 8? If you go back and read it, I'm going to leave it up on the screen. Lord, the centurion replied, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Not only does he have faith, but he was submitting to Jesus. The centurion had faith that Jesus could heal his servant. He understood that he's not enough to heal one of his servants. The centurion was submitting himself or submitting something that could be in control or in his control before Jesus. You know, I do wonder if before all of this went down, because we don't get a little, we don't get the background context of the centurion side of things. I wonder if he was like running around the town. He's like, I need that medic. I need that medicine. I need you guys to come over to my house. We're going to figure this out. Or if the centurion paused and he's like, I need something more. I know I can't fix this. I need to find Jesus. I need to have faith. And that is exactly what he had as we're going to continue to read. For I too am a man under authority, having soldiers under my command. This is a centurion speaking. I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Hearing this, Jesus was amazed. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. And said to those following him, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with so great a faith. Then Jesus told the centurion, go, as you have believed, let it be done for you and his servant was healed that very moment. Now, let me clear up something right now. This isn't just a Roman soldier. This is a centurion. And if you don't know anything about that, this is basically the, the this is the commander of the Roman army. All right. So if you take a like a hierarchy right here, okay, you're gonna basically have like your you know low level soldiers, and then you're gonna have like your king up here. The centurion's like right there in the middle. All right. Now if that means nothing to you, let's put it in today's world and like corporate America. You have your entry level positions, right? And then you have like your CEO, CFO, like top senior executives. And then right there in the middle, you have your managers and people that have been there for a while and lower level seniors and so on and so forth. And that is what a centurion is. He's like a manager. People care about him and people uh, take orders from him. And at the end of the day, that is what he is. He's got power. And in verse 9, the centurion mentions this kind of power. Did you catch it? For I too am a man under authority, having soldiers under my command. I say to this one, go. And he goes. 
and to another come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. So, here is a man who has a ton of power, and instead of trying to fix it himself, he has faith that Jesus can fix it. Now, if we look at verse 10 again, like I said, it's one of the only instances in the Bible where Jesus was shocked. Hearing this, Jesus was amazed and said to those following him, Truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with so great a faith. Jesus was amazed. Why was he shocked? Because he saw a man with power. He saw a man with responsibilities. He saw a man with control come to him instead of trying to fix it himself. Okay, let me try and relate this back. Like, why do I need to know the Roman soldier hierarchy? Why am I trying to figure out the power? And how does this all relate to me? What is the lesson you're trying to teach me? I get faith. I try. I get submitting things. Let me tell you. Here, I have a pen, okay? If I hold on to this pen, what's going to happen? Nothing. I mean, <laughs> it's just going to stay here. It's going to stay in my control. It's not going to drop. It's not going to be thrown across the room or anything crazy like that. Let's say this pen is whatever it is that you're holding on to. Okay, what the centurion did in the story was release this pen. He released that pen. And as I mentioned, he knew he had power, but at the end of the day, he knew he couldn't heal his servant. So he had faith and knew he had to submit to God. He had faith to give up control over that entire situation. Okay, let's bring this back to you. You all might have something in your mind right now about something you just need to let go of like the centurion did in this situation. Something you just need to give over to God and have faith that God is going to handle it and have faith like the centurion did in this story. Would you have the faith to do exactly what the centurion did? Just drop it. Just hand it over to God. Don't worry about it anymore. So for me personally, if this pen represents something, and I hope it maybe represents something for you, I find it really hard to give up control with the plans I have for the future. I always feel like it's important to have a plan in place and it's like, this is the month, this is the year that I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And it's important to do that, yes, but it's also important to be able to pivot whenever God tells me to pivot. So I need faith, like the centurion in the story did. And I need to let go of my future plans and have faith that God is going to help me along the way in the future. So what I want all of you to do is try and get a visual reminder, try and get something in your head where you can have something like this pen and just let it go. Give it over to God. I hope that you'll do that today. Let me pray for us. Father God, thank you so much for today. It is so, so cool to just read these stories in the Bible. It is so awesome to just apply them to our lives too. Yes, it was over 2,000 years ago, but we can still learn and glean so much from this scripture. I pray that as we go throughout this week, as we go throughout this day, ultimately, that we can just submit to you. We can have faith through submission. That's my prayer for today. Same I pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.